Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Riker7, and I'm going to be running Squirm today for UKSG. Uh, this is my first marathon. Uh, it's really awesome to get this opportunity and to be the opening run of the morning, which is really cool. Uh, I'm going to be doing any percent, which we'll sort of talk about as we go through it. And with me as my co-commentator, we have uh, Curious Lemar. If you'd like to say hello, introduce yourself. Hello, good morning. I am Curious Lima. I uh, hold a couple of records in various categories on this game, but Riker is trying his best to <laughs> take them all from me. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Uh, are we ready to sort of start the, the timer? Of course. Okay, cool. Well, so timer starts just when we hit when we confirm. Uh, so I guess we'll start in uh, five, four... Three, two, one, and go. Okay, so uh, we've got about six or seven seconds of uh, loading screen before it all kicks off, and now we're in. Uh, so Squirm's uh, an indie platformer that came out uh, in 2018, uh, pretty much a solo effort by developer Alex Carpenter, uh, who took a lot of inspiration from the Electronic Superjoy games. Uh, our objective is to basically collect uh, six keys throughout the game, defeating a variety of bosses on the way, and uh, rescue our uh, rat friend who has been kidnapped. That's a good start. Uh, we're playing on a, a slightly new version of the game, actually. It had a content update on Thursday, of all things, so putting the game to version 3, which changed a few things about the controls and the movement, so some of the old, uh, some of the old movement feels a little bit different than how it has for the last two years, basically, at this point. Uh, so getting used to that's been uh, been a bit of fun, but I think as Lima will agree, all, overall it's been a overall improvement to the to the game itself. Yeah, I was playing it through this morning. The uh, the, the movement controls are uh, just that bit cleaner, um, and along with the uh, update, we got some lovely uh, DLC as well. Um, one trick that Riker found recently is that you can. <laughs> shoot using both the keyboard and the controller to double your shoot speed so as you can see there he's just dispatched the uh, first boss um twice as fast as he would have done prior to uh, discovering that strat it was a great uh, great discovery so that's our first key as well of Luda. that boss was uh just sort of it was a bit a bit dull to do in the older versions but once we found the trick it was great i think basically whatever the game is made in unity and whatever input control it's listening to it doesn't differ it differentiates the two different shoot buttons uh Entirely different. Oops, I've made a mess of this. That's it. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a uh, very exciting week for the game. As we said, the uh, free update came out, which just contains um, some very uh, challenging DLC. Uh, but prior to the uh, update coming out, Riker discovered another skip that we uh, we like to call. Um, well, it's got a few names, but yeah. Screen War or Reset Abuse, um, where we found that you could uh, transition backwards off the screen you're on, and if you reset the player, which you can do um, to get your position back, if you reset the player at the right time when you are transitioning to the other screen, you'd end up actually at the exit of the current screen you're on. So we discovered that you, yeah. could, uh, you could basically skip every screen pretty much in yeah <laughs> it was great and then immediately two days afterwards got patched out you know just enough time for Lima to get a few to get a, a world record or two. Oh. oh look we've got the uh the ghost bug where sometimes if you die the ghosts whose movement speed increases as you move if you die sometimes they'll just keep keep coming at you so you have to do a full reset uh, one of the things you might see throughout this in a couple of places is if I need to uh, reset a level quickly because I've messed something up or if just if you need to get back to the start of the level, you can tap a button and it'll just reset everything, timers, your position, all the enemy states. Uh, we use it a few times throughout the run. We used it, you may have seen when I picked up the gun before attacking Ludo. Uh, it's just a nice little nice little uh, trick that was added to help with some of the puzzles. So coming up to the second boss now, uh, Skellord, who is one of my least favorite bosses. I think they've made him easier though in this update because he dies a lot quicker than he used to. So that's key number two. Going back to the hub. And potentially coming... they've made him easier. Potentially, Sorry? I think. I think maybe more. I think you've just got used to where uh, you've got really good at doing the double tap timing. Maybe uh... it's just doing the double tap whilst jumping. It's such a pain because you're sort of your hands are all over the place during it. Uh, so now we're into the ice level. Oh yeah, and Lima, you won't have seen this before, but. Uh... Uh, the uh, the music's changed for the ice level. 
apparently yeah, been getting but... compl- apparently been getting complaints that the music wasn't very good or was too annoying, so he, he tweaked it. I look forward to seeing that later because I quite enjoyed the ice music. I'll be honest. <laughs> really? Yeah, I quite liked it as well. It's still good. Like the initial sort of you know the the main sort of melody of it's there. It's just been kind of retuned a little bit. So yeah, the main sort of thing here is ice physics and these horrible horrible enemies who just sort of chase you in a really demented manner. But we kind of just jump over most of them. There are, um, other than the uh, any percent category in this game, there's uh, a couple of other ones, including the 100%, which there are a few rooms that uh, Riker, obviously, for the any percent category is missing, where there are also collectible stars, one per world area. Um, and, yeah, that <laughs> the, the rooms that uh, you find these, uh, these stars in, they get very hard by the end of the game mm. uh, and notably add quite a bit of time to the uh, to the estimate yeah and then when you get them you get like a section of like sort of challenge levels at the end of the game so coming up we have the rng nightmare that is king fatty you basically have to just jump and try and throw penguins at him and he can just hang around wherever he wants during this uh, section his movements his mo- his when he moves is completely arbitrary and where he moves to but that was a pretty good Pretty good fatty run there. Uh, we're going into the next section now, tower, which is mostly just about destroying destroyable blocks. Uh, it's kind of just a bit walking through it, so if you've got anything you want to read, uh, now's a good time. Well, I've got something that might make you a little bit happy here. We've got two donations that are coming already. One from Danger Kennedy for forty dollars. Oh wow! The comment: I don't sub to Nerd Riker, but I'll donate. Oh. Good luck from Julian Gav putting this towards calling Charizard big idiot because absolutely. And we've also got five dollars from you. Well, want to see my preferred run, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for those two donations. Nice. Lovely. Thank you. All for a great cause. So yeah, we're mostly just sort of destroying blocks here. We need to hit these three. Le- we need to hit three levers, and it will unlock the door to the. Not so much the boss because we don't. He doesn't have a life bar, but uh, he may seem. Uh, he may seem somewhat familiar to people who've played uh, certain popular <laughs> platforming uh, series before. Yeah, this this world. Uh... We call it we call it the castle or, or, or Bowser's castle yeah. generally. I think, um, I think officially it is called it is called castle officially. I think, but yeah, we added the the Bowser's bit to it. But with all these with all these jumps that he's doing against these blocks, we mentioned before that um, prior to the controls being fixed um, in the latest update, uh, there was a tendency to snag on the corners of collision, even though the blocks look like they should be sort of uh, straight walls uh, each one's collision was sometimes uh, obeyed so this area used to be or you know has been historically the run killer well for me at least I don't yeah, know it is definitely one of those it's like the individual blocks fair enough you can kind of understand that with them but it's like when there's like a big solid section of straight line wall that looks like there is, it looks like it should just be one big length of collision and it's actually also all tiled collision that's the the one that really catches you out there. Okay, so that should be all three levers now. And we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go fight some trademark infringement, and I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a trick fairly re- that was also discovered fairly recently by, or a sort of site times have discovered by. I think it was Troy of Athens who found this one where. You can jump over him. I'm real. I'm gonna play it a little bit safe there. Well, you can jump over him to save a bit of time. And now we have about 45, about 40 seconds of just mashing through uh, a cutscene. Stay hydrated. We, we discovered a we discovered a, a slight uh, glitch with this quite early on. That if you mash the button hard enough, uh, the text at the end breaks and yeah. you get what looks like jargon. And we discovered it so early that we thought that's just what it was meant yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I think I had just been spamming because sh- you you uh, you know the deep lore of this game is your friend Lix here, who's standing just in front of you, uh, told you to go and collect the keys in order to rescue uh, rescue cr- your friend your rat friend Crackers and turn him back to normal. And now we have the ultimate betrayal moment coming up. Uh, but yeah, I, I think when I played this casually, I got the, the broken text. I didn't know it was. It was only when... Yeah, so here we go. This is not meant to do this, but... Yeah, if you're not mashing the button, you do actually get some more uh, some more uh, deep lore, as it were. Uh... <laughs> okay. 
So that's that key. So now we're coming up to Tower, which is one of the areas that's been affected a bit more by the, uh, the change because we've got a jetpack section coming up that uh, the controls have been tweaked for that quite considerably to make them less uh, less janky, which for our purposes is quite good. It does slow down the section a little bit, but uh, let's see, can I make... So this is quite a precise jump. Getting it on the first or second attempt is really good, trying to sort of fit just between there. So one of the big things here is these uh, these sections on the wall that will shoot these arrows super fast towards you. Uh, as you can see, each section has sort of been introducing uh, a general and new mechanic, and then we're going to see uh, bits. So we need to collect 75 coins. Yeah, I skipped those two just because they kind of would have taken me more time to pick up because the route we take gives us two extra coins that we can collect. So if we have a, if we have a miss any, if we're at a, we're at a slight deficit, we can uh, we can work with that. So yeah, this is this was always for a while. This was my run killer because basically, if you die during the section, it wastes so much time that the run is basically <laughs> you can't recover us at this point. Generally, and you know, unless you're making sort of absolutely huge strides, but uh, you know, you can lose up to a minute. We got a pretty good cycle there for these things as well, so that's nice. Usually, if you get a good cycle here, it means you were a bit slower earlier on. It's uh, you know, the price you pay. So we're just about finished with the tower, got our 75 coins. And we're going to fly back to the hub and go to uh, my favourite section of the game, which is the space world. Best music, uh, some really cool platforming. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it just it it like it looks the best as well. I think. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, I mean, 100%. it's a lovely shade of purple, which is yeah, that's always going to do well with me. Yeah, uh, same, same, same. And yeah, the mu the music's great. It's got like the most color, like the sort of the the rainbow trail effect that he added for like some of the enemies. That's all. That's really cool as well. So yeah, yeah, it is very purple, but. And one of the other things that distinguishes this one is like transitioning between levels isn't instant in Space World. There's like a slight sort of little screen fade, uh, which w which meant as well that when we discovered the uh, the no reset the reset abuse trick or the screen warp glitch, this was the only section where it didn't work because these these transitions, the slowing down of the uh, of the screen change, just meant that the the glitch wouldn't work for whatever reason. So yeah, just it's much thing. Like you, you, you're already sort of seeing a lot of things. Well, there's quite a lot of new mechanics added to Space World. I think of all the all the sections, it's got the most sort of new things to deal with. Like all these sort of cool animations. Like most of the other stuff up to this point is kind of animated on a fairly sort of static sort of uh, pattern. But here we've got these. It seems we've got these black holes, uh, which we need to dodge through. Yeah, you can you can find your uh, your. Uh, finish time being very effective by space levels as well because the uh, the the rooms tend to be like quite a bit longer in this world. Yeah. Just like awkward shapes, like this one here, it doesn't look very long, but it's like quite an awkward shape. So if you do die here somewhere like here, then you do find yourself losing quite a bit, of... like that. <laughs> uh, you do you can find yourself losing quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of time to. Uh... That room was actually causing that room was actually causing me some trouble during my practice as well. Like again, the controls, the jump, I felt like I had to hold down jump a bit, a bit longer in that room from normal. Like the muscle memory, like version 3.0, even though it's really good for controls, there's like little bits of muscle memory that have been thrown off by the changes to it. Uh, so yeah, having only a few days to sort of practice and get that back, but it's still mostly the same. Well, I look forward to having a crack at the uh, the new. Uh, the new yeah. update later to see uh, how it feels differently. But to be fair, you, you, you're, you're running this very smoothly. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you're going to get. A, I reckon you're going to get a very good time here. Yeah. Cheers. So you saw there another instance of the, the double shot, the last use of it in the game. There's only three bosses that we need to use it on, and that's not even a boss. That's just like a sort of mini boss who just blocks our path for a little bit. He actually makes a, a little uh, return in the DLC. <laughs> Try to get the fast one there, but I've, uh, I've just seen that uh, we have a uh, special guest in the uh, in the uh, ESA chat. Uh -huh. 
a certain Alpenter. Oh, really? Yeah, Alpenter yeah. is the uh, the developer of the game. So welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in and watching me uh, blitz through the blitz through the game. We've been saying only good things about it. Uh, so we're coming up to this is my favorite section. It's also got my favorite boss, uh, Cotton. Uh, so he's a three-stage fight. It's a bit of an auto-scroller. Uh, there's one interesting thing when we get to phase three. We kind of want to get there without taking more than two hits uh, for it to sort of be a safe, a safe kill. So if you've got anything you want to say or uh, read out, then yeah, now, now's, a, now's a good, good time for that. Well, I do have something to read out. A certain commentator on your run has donated thirty dollars, Mr. Curious Lima. Thank oh, you wow. very much. With the comments, let's get this done, Riker. And Charizard has obviously got to be the big idiot. Thank you so much for that, Lima. Going straight to crisis. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so we're coming up to phase three now. Now I've sort of found that if you sit, like the way he shoots you in phase three is a bit RNG. But if you sit sort of roughly about here, the chance of him hitting you enough times to kill you is basically non-existent. So. Like you can see there, it's basically just going, you will get hit once or twice, but if you only take two hits leading up to this, even like the worst RNG tends not to uh, not to kill you. I mean, this is looking a bit risky, but we're still doing okay, we can still take two hits. And, we can compete a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But the thing is, I found if I get good RNG in phase one and two, then phase three, it just counterbalances it anyway. It's, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, so that's all the keys collected now, so now we're entering uh, the Shadow Realm. I know it's got uh, an official name, but I can't remember what it is, because I've been calling it the Shadow Realm for so long. Uh, so we've had our powers taken away from us, and what we're going to see is we're going to see like a return of all the previous sort of zone mechanics, but made a bit hard, made a bit a bit harder. The music, all the music for those areas has sort of been tweaked a little bit, and it's all got the sort of the monochrome aesthetic to it, so... There's a very nice sort of ramping of difficulty uh, up to this point. Yeah, there's some very good sort of uh, clean movement in this area as well that just makes it feel nice playing through. But yeah. by the same token, because there's so many of like these spikes and little bits yeah. to catch you out, you can either have be feeling totally zen and have a great <laughs> little run through, or you can get caught on every single little bit and just destroy your run. Yeah. And, then you get to face, you know, at the end of this, the final boss, who is the most RNG heavy in the game. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, Lemur, I think. Oh, I was going to say, I think that's the new, uh, new strategy. I have totally messed up the cycle for this. Let's see if I can recover it. Ah, oh, no. So you, you have to jump over that now because if you just run forward, it doesn't work. You may have seen again the post I made in the SRC forum. You have to jump over that first one, otherwise, yeah. This level was like the biggest source of mystery for us in 2.0 because there is a way that you could fold, make it to that ledge without having to push this down, but it was so random. Like we determined that it's basically some kind of animation cycle, but it wasn't something that we were able to easily manipulate. But then 3.0 just just got rid of the the animation the animation cycle issue. So uh, official news just in, uh, Riker Alpenter says that the Shadow Realm is called the Mirror World. Mirror World. Cool, cool. Maybe I should change it on my uh, live split. <laughs> so yeah, so we've done the ice area, we've done the ghost area, now we're into like the uh, sort of the the, to the tower level again. Let's play a little bit safe there. I'm gonna see if I can get this in a fast run. If you do a little jump there, you can usually outpace this first spike block, and then you're basically cycle ahead. But this bit here is actually one of the areas where I found the collision issues can still still happen, although that was pretty clean. So now we've got our double jump back again, so we can just jump through all this stuff. And now we're into the... Sorry, we're in castle, now we're into tower. Oops. Yeah, when you're first playing this uh, on your uh, sort of blind playthrough, uh, this whole uh, mirror world is very daunting. Mm -hmm. um, it seems really difficult. Once you've got it nailed down, there's still a few tricky rooms, but... Uh, you tend to just sort of, you know, muscle memory it. There we go. Yeah, and it's one of those ones where if you're doing your first playthrough, if like if you're like me and you sort of just keep it, look out for everything, you'll, your first playthrough will also be 100%. So your first playthrough will take you to like the heart levels as well, which are pretty brutal. Uh, so yeah, so now we're going to get the jetpack and our gun upgrade. Uh, we're pretty much going to be like this for the rest of the rest of the run. 
Uh, and this is where the changes to the, this, this actual section is where I found the changes to the jetpack the most beneficial. It's so much easier to control, so Alpenter, thank you very much for that. Because one of the upcoming levels was my least favourite in the entire game, just because the jetpack controls were so twitchy. Uh, and it's this one, which I think I can now basically do without having to kill anything, just because it's so easy to control the jetpack now. So that level Flying is... Little leggy boys. Yeah. This section actually, funnily enough, has gotten a little bit harder. Uh, I found that the jetpack acceleration speed is just slow enough that that bottom row, trying to get by them without killing them, is like a pain. So what we kind of do is we have to be very, we have to be very careful in falling through that. You used to be able to just land on the floor and then accelerate super fast and you'd be fine, but now you have to like try and be sort of hugging the ceiling. Uh, and we're coming up to the final boss soon. I think this is the. Okay, yeah, so we're about to hit the final boss, and we've got another minute of minute of uh, cutscene. So, if you've got anything you want to shout out, now's a good time. Of course. I have $20 from Drazzle. I think that's how that's pronounced. Hey, Riker. Hey, Curious Lima. Drazzle here. Good luck on the run. Hopefully, Crackers plays nice. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Is that Drazzle? Is that Drazzle? Do you reckon that could be uh, Greg? Lima. That was Drow ZX, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Drow ZX, okay. Just wanted to, yeah, double check. Cool, well thank you very much. What is your choice, by the way, for that donation? Because you do have the uh, bid uh, choice for that. Get that Charizard name in. Big idiot. It's going straight to Big Idiot. Yeah, given, given that you're like quite close to the end of your run here, to then be stopped by a minute long, uh, yeah. <laughs> bit of a, a minute long cutscene. Just okay. So we basically what we have to do is it's a three phase fight. We need to kill both his tentacles, uh, and then shoot the uh, and then a little enemy called Float pops out of him. There's three different attacks you can do. This is the worst one, the Shadow Balls, because they bounce around, they're incredibly annoying, and you always think you've dodged them, and then they'll catch you out. So there you go, you kill the tentacles, float pops out, we take off a third of his health, fight resets. And that's the, uh, the victory, and that's how you do it. Oh, we get your Shadow Balls again. It's right, so the other ability that you can do, which, whew, <laughs> which we may, may or may not see, is... Uh, We'll send out some cogs. They're not too bad, they kind of just follow you around. They're only a problem if Shadow Balls are also out, because trying to dodge the Shadow Balls without running into the cogs is a, is a bit of a pain. So there you go, there's the cogs. Uh, oh, and there's the Shadow Balls to ruin the day. And that happens, that is really unfortunate. Oh, that, that was so close. Yeah. yeah so close. That's, uh, that is what's killed multiple world record runs. Well, you'll be on world record pace and then that happens. It's really, really not good. Yeah, I think for a while the uh, the world record run for quite some time, I think my one, wasn't it, uh, before you uh, beat it, uh, I only got the uh, tentacle attacks. Yeah. Uh, it was like fantastic RNG. Uh, and trying to then try and get a gold split <laughs> on, on that split is near impossible when you've had perfect RNG. Just you know, clean, clean up those a little bit just before I progress onto phase three. I think he always opens the phase with double with a double tentacle attack, which is at least nice because you get a little bit of time to, to do it. Double, double, though. That's it. Oh, look at that. That's okay, so time's about to come yeah. up. It'll fade to time just as we uh, hit the horse screen. So, and time. Okay, eighteen fifty-seven IGT. That was that's pretty good. I'll I'll take that. How did we do in terms of uh, real time? Twenty-two fifty. So you're only about uh, a, a minute outside yeah, of your. Uh... Yeah, it's a minute off. Minute off PB. I'm very happy with that. Like some of the mistakes were, were pretty bad. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. If we'd collected all the uh, the stars at this point, we'd be moving into the uh, the hundred percent area after we after we sit through this. Uh, it's gonna finish up telling us that we uh, did a, a ter that we did a terrible job for not collecting any of the stars. Uh, but yeah, that's that's square many percent. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Again, I want to say a big th uh, thank you to UKSG for uh, giving me the opportunity to run it, especially as like the first run of the day. It's pretty awesome. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. Uh, big thank you to ESA for letting us use their chat, for letting us sort of use their channel and assisting with everything. Uh, yeah, Limo, do you have anything you want to you want to say? Yeah, it was a very uh, very smooth run there, Riker. Um, yeah, 
as as you said, uh, thanks to uh, thanks to ESA and uh, UKSG, uh, this is a fantastic event, and that's uh, looking forward to seeing all the rest of the runs. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else uh, you guys want to shout out? Let's shout out our charity crisis. Absolutely. Yeah, so the money that we've been raising uh, over this marathon is going straight to Tri- Crisis, who are supporting homeless during the current pandemic and all ongoing as well. Basically, what they're trying to do in a nutshell is just to get the homeless people off the streets into a homes and help them get a job as well so they can keep said home as well. So massive shout out to everybody who donated that during that run to raise money to help those people out during this uh, struggling time that we're all facing right now. You people are awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to say one last thing. It said speed rank B. That is the best speed rank you can get in any percent. You can only get an A or an S by doing 100%. I, well, I, I'm not bad at this game, I swear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I think we're uh, I think we're all done now.